Praise the Lord, everybody. everybody. Are we happy that we have the victory? Yeah. We're in the Easter season still. We're in the Easter season all year, yeah. actually. But this song says, death could not hold him down. He is the king of kings. Yeah. Lifted in majesty. He is the king of kings. And we bless God for him. Amen. 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 Everybody just worship God right now in this moment. If you believe he's worthy to be praised, just give God all the highest praise by saying hallelujah. 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 Yes, God.
Good morning, church family. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'll start at verse 1 and go through verse 10. Could you stand, if you're able to stand for the reading of the word? And it reads, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with thy habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Verse 4 says, For we who are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Verse eight says we are confident. Yes, we are pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. In verse 10, I'll stop here. It says, for we, must, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Amen. 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 The blessed readers and the hearers of his most holy word. You may be seated. May we all go to the Lord in prayer. And Father God, I just want to thank you this morning for allowing us all to assemble and under your word, Father, that you brought us all here safely. And Father, that you continue guiding us and leading us and directing our paths. Father, thank you for your son Jesus who died for our oh, sins. Yeah. Father, we know that we're not perfect and that we all sin and falling short. 
but, but your good graciousness, Father, and your grace that you allow us another chance, Father, to, Father, to get our life right and continue to try to walk in faith by your word. And, Father, there's so many things going on in this world today, Father, but you said in your word there'd be rumors of wars and, and things of this nature, and, Father, I just want to thank you for being the Lord of my life and and this family life that all assembled here, Father. And Father, we thank you for our pastor and his family, Lord, that you continue blessing him and having him feeding us the word. And Father, that we just continue to guide and walk by your faith, Father. You said, do not think it strange, Father, that the things that's going on in your life, Father, that you would have control. And I just want to continue asking you for forgiveness, Father. And that your son, Jesus, Father, thank you for Jesus for doing all he's doing in my life and also this family life, Lord. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, Lord, there's no telling what situations that my life might be in. And I just want to thank Jesus for all he's doing, Father. Because Jesus has been graceful and merciful for me as well as others, Father. And Lord, I just thank you have mercy on our soul. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, my world. This is Happenings at Horror. If you do not get our weekly text, Please see the church office to be able to stay updated on events and announcements. Our 2024 theme is Fixing the Foundation. Commitment, consistency, connection, and children will be our focus. We will be showing our appreciation to our musicians on Sunday, April 14th at 11.15 a.m. Congratulations to all of our new members who will be graduating from Horb's new member orientation on Sunday, April 21st at 11.15 a.m. Horb Cares presents a community giveaway that will be on Saturday, April 20th. Volunteers are asked to be there at 8 a.m. if you are interested. The Young Adult Ministry will have an outing on April 20th at Chicken and Pickle in Grand Prairie. It will start at 6 p.m. They also will have a Bible study on Sunday, April 21st after worship. Horm's Marital Counseling and Tuesday Night Insight is canceled for this week. Don't forget to join our online prayer call on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Save the day for Mount Horeb's annual Worship on the Water 4th Anniversary Celebration on Sunday, May 12th. It will be $45 per person due by April 1st. If you would like to sponsor a youth, you may sign up on the Mount Horeb Beltline website. If you would like to order a shirt for Horeb's Worship on the Water, a sign-up sheet will be available after church starting this Sunday through April 28th. Shirts will be available for pickup on May 5th. Happy birthday to all of our horror April birthdays. Happy anniversary to Horeb's first wedding couple, Deacon Aaron and Alana Parham. Our version of Sunday School Christian Cross Training is now every Sunday at 10.15 a.m., including donuts and coffee and classes for all ages. There are five ways to give. By mail, PayPal, Givelify, Cash App, or Zelle. Don't forget to connect with us on iTunes, Facebook, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or the Bible app. This has been Happenings at Horror. I'm Jaden Robinson. Have a blessed week.
anybody happy that we serve a risen Savior who yet lives? Yeah, he, 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 he's not dead, but he did die. Yeah, yeah. say amen. Let us all say amen again. I don't know about you, but I'm just happy to be alive. Anybody else happy to be alive? I, I, I've deserved to be dead, buried deep in my grave, but the Lord allowed old death to behave, and, and he allowed my golden moment to roll on just a little while longer. And for that, I just want to say thank you, Lord. You've been good to me, Lord. You, you've been kind to me, Lord. You've been merciful to me, Lord. I just want to say thank you. I serve a risen Savior who sits high and looks low. Give it up for this music department. Uh, in, in whom we are celebrating today. Uh, amen. We do know uh, that music is an important part of our worship service. Amen. I, I like to hear the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon we're going to have some horn players over there. Soon we're going to have some, a lead guitar, some bongos. And look, I just found out this morning, I just found out that the Lord has already blessed us with a piano player. We're just waiting for the Lord to talk to her. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. We're now up to uh, the generosity portion of our service. Amen. 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 I can look at you and tell that God has been good to all of y'all. Huh? Hello? If not, y'all show, y'all, y'all show look like God has been good to you. But we come, what kind of church is this? We're a giving church. And it's because of your generosity, those of you who are here physically and those of you in our cyber sanctuary, it's because of your generosity that we're able to do all that we are doing for the kingdom of God. Amen. Y'all, it cost, it cost to be a giving church. Amen. And, uh, and we ain't gonna stop giving. So we don't need you to stop giving, amen? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Uh, those of you in the cyber sanctuary, there are giving avenues. We ask that you will use those uh, to be a benefit, a blessing to this ministry. Uh, but we're now in the hands of our ushers as they receive our, our gifts. Also, if you are if you are writing a check and you want to be a blessing at the end of the service to our musicians, all you got to do is uh, earmark it on your envelope. Uh, that portion of your check is going toward the musicians, and we uh, we can handle it that way. Amen. Y'all y'all did come to be a blessing to the musicians, right? Oh, that was so sorry, Lord. Let me try it again. Y'all did come to be a blessing to the musicians, right? Okay, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for what you do to uh, support uh, support Mount Hor this ministry in a financial way. Amen, amen, amen. We have a young young person that's gonna be celebrating a birthday this week. Uh, come on up, Caden. Come on up, Kate and Kate. Come on, turn around so they can see you, man. How old are you going to be? Seven. Say it with your chest. Seven. Say it louder. Seven. Seven. He's going to be seven, what, Tuesday? Thursday. He's going to be seven years old. And so, as always, uh, we, we, we celebrate our youth around here. And, uh, and, and if your, if your youth is celebrating a birthday, it behooves you to have them in the house. Amen. Because we celebrate our youth around here. And so 
at the end of service, I'm gonna have a couple of dollars for you, okay? And uh, I'm gonna encourage everybody else to put a little something, something in Caden's pocket, all right? Amen. Amen. Nothing says happy birthday like some dollars. <laughs> Amen. All right, go on, go on back, man. Don't let me forget. Don't let me forget, Grandma. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, we do uh, quickly. Uh, there will be no meetings this week. Uh, no meetings this week. Um, uh, for I got to travel to the big city of Atlanta. You going to Georgia. I'm going to Atlanta, Texas. Yeah, I'm going to the big city of Atlanta, Texas <laughs> uh, for one of our state meetings. And uh, also Sister, Sister Merrill and Sister uh, and Mother Hooper uh, will also be joining me in Atlanta, Texas. So uh, y'all pray for traveling grace and uh, arriving mercy. And so we will not have any meetings uh, this week, I told uh, Brother Fuquay and them that we wasn't having marriage Mondays, and they say, "Oh no, they just we having a good time on Mondays, y'all, uh, for with marriage Mondays." And so uh, I encourage you uh, to be a part of marriage Mondays uh, when we resume. Uh, you can even if even if you are already married. Uh, it can help you out in your marriage. If you're planning on getting married, this is the class for you. Amen? Amen. And if you just ain't going to get married, then you, you don't have to come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you just made it up in your mind, I just ain't getting married, then, then so be it. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Also, uh, we do have a giveaway coming up Saturday. Hello? And so we need all hands on deck. Thank you, buddy, for that one amen. We need all hands on deck this coming Saturday uh, at... 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, we need you to be here so we can set up and, uh, and prayerfully we can service thousands of folk. Amen. 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 So that's this coming Saturday uh, at 8 o'clock. We have our, our community giveaway. Uh, also, on next week, um, is the strategy meeting next week, Angela? The strategy meeting? The 24th, is it on the calendar? Okay, 24th uh, will be our strategy meeting. It's, it's, um, we're going we're gonna to meet here. Is that, that's a Tuesday night, right? That's a Wednesday? All right, well, I'm going to take pastoral prerogative and uh, we're going to meet Tuesday night. Tuesday night, we're going to meet here uh, for our strategy meeting. And we need as many of you to be here as we discuss where we are as a body of baptized believers and where we're going. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we need you here, especially all of our leaders. We need all of our leaders here uh, for the strategy meeting on uh, the 23rd, 23rd, meet us here. Amen. Amen. Also, we're going to make a change to our prayer call next month. Uh, instead of having a prayer call, uh, we're going to have a good old-fashioned, start having a good old-fashioned prayer meeting before uh, Tuesday Night Insight. 
So the good old fashioned prayer meeting will start at 6.30 and Tuesday Night Insight will start at seven o'clock. Amen. Uh, we, we decided to take the prayer call off of Zoom uh, because we don't know what y'all doing while we praying. And, and prayer is too important uh, for us to just haphazardly do it. And so we're going to do it in person uh, because I just believe when, when you got two or three folk dedicated to praying, uh, there God, God will honor 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 that instead of you just got the prayer call on and and watching the Mavericks game I say ouch too I say ouch amen hallelujah tell the truth shame the devil yeah so we're gonna be praying in person from here uh, starting next month so please uh, join us uh, next month amen Amen, amen. Let us stand. Am I forgetting anything? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Sit, uh, have a seat. Come on down, Pop, while you're standing. Come on down. Come on down. And give Pop, deep, give, him, give him that microphone, please. God woke you up this morning, you ought to be in an amen spirit. Good morning. I stand to you in behalf of our pastor, Reverend Nash Jr., who is going to bring the word in a minute, and you're going to know who we are. We are a Bible-based and spirit-led church who gives when in at all costs. But I'm here today to welcome our first-time guests in the church. If you are a first-time member, I mean guest to this church, would you please stand? We're not going to ask you to say anything. We're not going to ask you to say anything, but we want to welcome you to our church this morning. And with open arms, we're going to say, welcome to our church. Now, if you are without a church, we ask that you join us on Sunday mornings at level 15. And if you are a long way from your church, then we ask that you stop by anytime you can. And those who, of us, of you who are in our cyber, our cyber, we ask that you would push that chat button and let us know you are here. Now, while you are still standing, uh, Mount Herbert, would you please stand? We're going to give you something that you can't get anywhere else but here at Mount Herbert. So what we do is we to show our love for each other, and to recognize God as our Savior, we fist bump. So church, let's go and give them what they can't get anywhere else. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all, move. Give somebody a pound and just let them know it's good to see you. Come on, it's Selfie Sunday. Selfie Sunday. Take some selfies. Get your phones out. Get your phones out. Get your phones out.
know is gonna be. Come on, y'all. A lovely day. bit better after your fellowship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. Come on. Let's uh, let us stand. And uh, let's do this number and I hope you know it. Amen. Amen. Yield not to temptation. Come on, you ought to know that one. He's willing to help you. Some other to win. By man for the young world. God bless and subdue. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles. Second, <laughs> Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter uh, 14. Uh, we'll house our scripture reference for uh, the time that we have to share. We introduced this passage on Tuesday night, so if you were here, um, uh, and 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 you did your homework. I told you you wanna wanna read the third, the fourteenth, fifteenth, and the sixteenth chapter uh, pertaining to the life of King Asa. And if you did your homework, you ought to be able to help me preach this morning. Amen. 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 Second uh, Chronicles chapter fourteen. I'll really be dealing with verses number 8 through verse number 12. Uh, but just for uh, reading consideration, uh, let, me back, let me back it all the way up to verse 1. And uh, I'll read to verse number 12. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Version of the Bible, so it, just, it may read a little bit different uh, from uh, the the version that you have, but follow along with me uh, the best that you can. Uh, verse number one of chapter 14 of Second Chronicles, it reads, Abijah rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. His son Asa became king in his place. During his reign, the land experienced peace for 10 years. Asa did what was good and right in the sight of the Lord his God. He removed the pagan altars and the high places. He shattered their sacred pillars and chopped down their Asherah poles. He told the people of Judah to seek the Lord God of their ancestors and to carry out the instruction and the commands. He also removed the high places and the shrines from all the cities of Judah. And the kingdom experienced peace under him. 
Verse number six, because the land experienced peace, Asa built fortified cities in Judah. No one made war with him in those days because the Lord gave him rest. So he said to the people of Judah, let us build these cities and surround them with walls and towers, with doors and bars. The land is still ours because we sought the Lord our God. We sought him and he gave us rest on every side. So they built and succeeded. Verse number eight, and Asa had an army of 300,000 from Judah bearing large, large shields and spears and 280,000 from Benjamin bearing regular shields and drawing the bow. All these were valiant, valiant warriors. Then Zerah the Cushite came against him with an army of one million and three hundred chariots. They came as far as Marishal, and Asa marched out against him and lined up in battle formation in Zepatath Valley at Marishal. Verse number 11, and Asa cried out to the Lord his God, Lord, there is no one besides you to help the mighty and those without strength. Help us, Lord our God, for we depend on you, and in your name we have come against this large army. Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere mortal hinder you. Then verse number 12, so the Lord routed the Cushites before Asa and before Judah, and the Cushites fled. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Just for a few minutes, I want to talk about when peace becomes a problem. Yeah, when, when peace becomes a problem. My brothers and sisters, we talked about this on Tuesday night, and it was really, uh, we really uh, focused in on our leaders, on the leaders of Mount Horeb Beltline. And what we discussed is in order to be, you see, I gotta, re, I gotta recapitulate what we talked about Tuesday night uh, because some of y'all wasn't here. Amen. So on Tuesday night that you missed, we talked about how leaders ought to have the right aim, they ought to have the right army, and they ought to have the right alliance. That's what we talked about on, on Tuesday night, and we introduced some and presented others to King Asa, uh, who is the third king of the tribe of Judah. Um, and just in case you don't know, uh, Israel, the, the, the united Israel, the united uh, Israel, all 12 sons of Israel, they formulated the children of Israel. And then after Saul, after, I'm sorry, not after Saul, after uh, Solomon, after Solomon's reign, they divided. Ten tribes went north, and two tribes went south. The ten tribes that went north continued with the name Israel. They continued to be Israel. And the two tribes that went south became Judah. Amen. Amen. I, I know that's probably a little bit more than what you came for, but uh, I, 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 I thought I better set the stage that the two tribes that went south were Judah and Benjamin. And that's what formed uh, the tribe of Judah. And so this tribe of Judah, Asa, is the third king uh, Say it like bruh man from fourth flow. <laughs> Ju uh, Asa is the third king of Judah. And, and what's interesting about King Asa is that he's a young adult. 
Now, the Bible doesn't give us the actual age of him, but, but he reigned over Judah for 41 years, and, uh, but, but he was a, 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 a young adult. And I just want to let all our young adults know that you're never too young uh, to do something for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I'm thankful we now have a working young adult department. Amen. 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 And, and we got young adults. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for young adults. Uh, but this was a young adult king. And, 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 and what's, what's interesting when we talked about Asa's aim, his aim was to do what was good and pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Yeah, he, he had the right aim. But, but to bring it to this morning when peace becomes a problem, you see, uh, if you, that's why I started with verse number one, because you read that during when he first got the kingdom of, Ju of Judah, the tribe of Judah, the text says that the Lord gave them peace for 10 years. Yeah, he gave them peace for, for 10 years. You got to understand, uh, uh, this, this time in which the Bible is speaking of, uh, it was kind of like Game of Thrones. Y'all watch Game of Thrones? And, you know, and, and, and folk will come and rage war against your tail. Yeah, at any moment in given time. But, but the Lord blessed him with 10 years of, of peace. Uh, but after that 10 years was over, came a problem. Yeah, it went from peace to a problem, my brothers and sisters. And what I want to let you know is that we're all fighting spiritual warfare. All of us are fighting spiritual warfare. Yeah. And, and even though we know we're fighting spiritual warfare, our problem is we try to fight spiritual warfare with carnal weapons. And it just won't work. You got to fight spiritual warfare with spiritual weapons. Yeah, the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I, I wish I just had one Bible reader up in here. We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh, but so, so many times we see it in and outside of the church. We wrestle against each other. Yeah, if you can't say amen, just say ouch. Yeah, we wrestle against each other. Yeah, when, when the fact of the matter is, it's, it's not that other person, it's what's on the inside of that other person. Whether it's God or Satan. Hello. And we, as the people of God, we got to start fighting spiritual warfare with spiritual weapons. Yeah. That's why you need to be in Bible study. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't fight with spiritual weapons if you don't know your Bible. Yeah, hello, somebody. No, you can't, you can't fight spiritual warfare if you ain't got spiritual weapons. And we are the people of God. This is God's church. We are God's people. This is God's word. <laughs> yeah, so we got we to we gotta fight spiritual warfare with spiritual weapons. And that's what Asa did. Asa fought this battle with spiritual weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you. Uh, 
The Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah, yeah, the best weapon that we have when we're fighting our spiritual warfare is to be in the right hand of the Lord. You do know the right hand is, represents warfare. Yeah, yeah, I, I know you don't believe me, so I brought some Bible to back it up. Exodus chapter 15, verse number 6. Moses describes the right hand of warfare when he says, Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in the pieces the enemy. Yeah, David weighs in on it as well, my brothers and sisters. Psalm 16 and 11, David says, Thou wilt show me the path of light in thy presence is fullness of joy and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. David says once again, thou has also given me a shield of my salvation and thy right hand hath holding me up. Yeah, he says again, Psalm 20 and 6, no, now know that the Lord saveth his anointed he will hear from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. He says, oh, sing to the Lord, oh God, a new song. For the Lord has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. Oh, it's, 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 it, it, that's where you want to be, my brothers and sisters. It's in the right hand of the Lord when it comes to this spiritual battle because the Old Testament cast God as a battle leader of Israel's army and credits God when military victories were won. Yeah. And so when you rely on him, my brothers and sisters, oh, he'll come through for you. Yeah, he'll, he'll He'll swing through. You know, that's what we used to say in Houston. He'll, he'll swing through when you're down, when you're down with the Lord. Yeah, I, let me ebonicalize. When you're down with the Lord, he'll swing through, country. I wish I had a witness that can testify to the fact that since I stayed down with the Lord, he came through my situation. Yeah, yeah, that's what Asa did. Asa, Asa stayed down with the Lord. What's interesting is, during his time of peace, he prepared for warfare. Yeah, and that's a, that's a message to all of us. You may be in your peaceful season now. Yeah, but, but it behooves you to to prepare for warfare. Yeah, I, I, I got a saying I live by. I expect the best, but I prepare for the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I expect the best, Mother Hooper, out of every situation. Uh, but Johnny B, I prepare for the bottom to fall out at any minute. Yeah, and that's what Asa did. While the Lord gave him 10 years of peace, he fortified the city. He built walls around the city. He got rid of those things that were against God, and, and, he, and he got ready for warfare. And can I tell you that if you get ready during your time of peace, then it ain't no problem when the warfare happens. Because Asa, Asa, Asa teaches us some realities that we ought to incorporate into our life in order to be ready for the battle. Yeah, yeah. First of all, first of all, the first thing that Asa shows us in this pericope, he shows us the first reality is that resources don't matter. Yeah, it's, 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 Cindy, it's right there. 
It's right there in the text. I didn't make it up. Verse number, verse number eight, verse number eight tells us that resources don't matter. Look at verses eight and nine. It says, Asa had an army of 300,000 from Judah bearing shields and then another 280,000 from Benjamin also having shields. But then look at number nine. Then Zerah the Cushite came against them with the army of a million men and 300 chariots. Look at the mathematics right there, my brothers and sisters. Asa's army, if you add those two numbers up, if my sentiments are correct, if my mathematics is correct, that's 580,000 men that he had on his team, that he had in his army, ready for warfare. But then Zerah the Cushite came with a million men. If you're reading in the King James Version, it says a thousand thousand, which simply translates to a million men. So, 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 so Asa teaches us that, that when the battle is on, when warfare is happening, that resources don't matter. Why it don't matter? Because look at Asa. He's standing there ready with this 580,000 men. Yeah, they, they already, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but they set in battle formation. They ready to go. That's why we told our leaders, you have to have an army. You have to get an army that's down with the cause. And if you got somebody on your team that ain't down with the cause, <laughs> y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah, yeah. If you, if, if you got a team member that ain't down with the cause, yeah, you are the weakest link. Because you got to have an army that's down that, as the young folk would say, you got to have folk that will ride or die with you. That's what I'm looking for, for my leaders. That's why I said at the end of the year, we evaluating folk. And if you're not cutting the mustard, and, and it ain't personal, it ain't personal, we're fighting spiritual warfare. I need folk that's going to stand right there with me. You as a leader need folk on your team that's going to stand right there with you and do what thus says the Lord. Yeah, Asa shows us reality, I mean, I'm sorry, resources don't matter. They got a million men, I got 580,000 men, but it don't matter. Because secondly, not only does resources not matter, let me go and get to this point because I'm, I'm spilling the beans, but resources don't matter, but reality doesn't matter. What you see with your eyes don't matter. For the Bible says we walk by and not by what you see with your eyes don't matter. Because see, look here, it's right there in the text. They, the text says they're set up in battle formation. That means they're ready to go to war. The 580,000, 580,001 are ready to go to war against a million folk. It's like I said this Tuesday night, it's like they drew a line in the sand and said, I, I, I wish you would cross that. Huh? Yeah, they were about that life. They were ready to go to war. They were ready. And that's what we got to do as far as our spiritual battle is concerned. We got to be ready to go to war. You do know it's wartime against the church. You do know that all kind of folk are speaking negatively on the church. And it's our fault. It's our fault when we are so judgmental. It's our fault 
when we tell folk you can't be a part of this church unless you fit this mold it's our part when we pro promote and, and, and when we promote we a black church <laughs> hello heaven gonna be full of other folk yeah it's our fault we, 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 we've helped aid the great falling away. Don't nobody want to come where you're going to be judged? Do you want to go where you're going to be judged? Because the last I checked, all of us have a sin nature. Hello. All of us have something wrong. Now, you see, y'all, uh, uh, Cyber Sanctuary, they not talking to me. Y'all talk to me because I, I'm the only one in here that got an issue. I'm the only one in here that got a problem. I'm the only one in here that has some things on my resume that I know that God ain't pleased with. But thanks be to God that God so loved little old Chuck that he sent his only begotten son. Yeah, I say it all the time. Come on. Come here. Come. If you got issues with sin, you got problems in your life, come here to Mount Hor Belt Line. Because we're going to love the hell out of you. I wish I had some help up in here. Yeah, I wish I had some help. Yeah, yeah, we, we church folk, we like to point the finger at everybody else. But, but the song say you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah, because reality doesn't matter. What you seeing now is not yet what the Lord is going to make that person into. I remember I came to Jesus. I didn't have to get myself together. I didn't, I didn't have to get all things right before I came to him. But I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary. I was wounded. And I was sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. Yeah, it's all because the power of the Lord made a change in my life. Yeah. Resources don't matter. Reality doesn't matter. Yeah, when peace turns into problem, those two things don't matter. But you want to know what does matter? Reliance matters. Yeah, it's right there in the text. Verse 11, they, Judah got, uh, Asa has his 580,000 men. Zerah has his 1 million men. They set in battle formation. They ready to go. They ready to do the doggone thing. And the first thing Asa does is what? He, he fights spiritual warfare with spiritual weapons. Uh, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't call Saul. He didn't. He didn't call nobody else. He didn't ask his mother. He didn't ask his daddy. He didn't call for reinforcements from some other nation. He called upon the name of the Lord. You ask me how do I know? Because I read my Bible. Verse eleven says, "Then Asa cried out to the Lord his God." And I like the way it says it in the, in the King James Version. The King James Version, Asa starts out his prayer saying, It is nothing with thee, O God. In other words, what he's saying, you can do whatever you want to do, Lord. I already know you, you, have, you have the propensity to do whatever you want to do. But, 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 but I'm asking you, O God, help this thou servant. Yeah, that's what you got to tell the Lord. You, you got to tell the Lord, Lord, I know it's your prerogative. I, 
I know it's your world. I know you can do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, through whoever you want to do it through, but this is thou servant. Please, if you will be so kind, Lord, help me. And Asa relied on the Lord. Then look at verse number 12. Verse number 12 says, because Asa relied on the Lord. Verse number 12 says, so the Lord routed. The Lord routed. It, it doesn't even say that they got into battle. It don't even say that they had to pull a sword. It didn't say that they had to pull a gun, a knife, or thump somebody on the shoulder. All it says, the Lord routed. It didn't say Judah routed. A am I missing it? Did I, did I miss that in y'all Bible? Yeah, it said the Lord routed. Because I'm telling you, he's, he's all, all powerful. The Lord we serve is omnipotent. For the Lord our God. <laughs> What does it say, Lita? The Lord our God is omnipotent. For the Lord our God is almighty. The Lord our God. He is one. I wish I had some, some choir members up in here. Because the Lord our God is omnipotent. Which simply means he has the power to do whatever he want to do whenever he want to do it. You see, you got to realize there's manpower, there's horsepower, there's electrical power, there's political power, there's atomic power, there's fuel power, there's engine power, there's solar power, there's brain power, there's uh, economic power, but none of these or all of these combined cannot compare to the omnipotency of our God. For he has all power. He can do what he pleases. He can do it when he pleases. He can do it where he pleases. He can do it why he pleases. And he can do it as he pleases. I want you to know that God does not have to submit to any other superior. He doesn't have to answer to any other authority. He doesn't have to report to any other ruler simply because there is no superior to the God of our salvation. Yeah, he's omnipotent, my brothers and sisters. There is no circumstance that can restrict him. There is no adversary that can hinder him. There is no situation that can constrain him. There is no power that can control him. There is no enemy that can defeat him. There is no obstruction that can block him. Who else but God could ignite the flame of the sun? Who else but God could position the stars in the universe? Who else but God could ordain the orbit of the moon around the world? Who else but God could carve mighty mountains of granite? Who else but God could fill vast oceans with water? Who else but God could change the direction of the wind? Who else but God could step out on nothing and create everything? Who else but God could wrap himself in skin and dwell amongst us? For 33 and a third years. Who else but God could die on Calvary's cross? Who else but God could be laid in a borrowed tomb to the third day morning? But Alex, I said early Sunday morning, he got up with the all power in his hand. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth living. Because he lives. 
Have you tried my Lord? Have you tried him? Do you know him? He's a friend when I'm friendless. He's water when I'm thirsty. He's food when I'm hungry. He's patience when I'm in a hurry. Yeah. Oh, hell. The power of Jesus and his name. Let angels prostrate and fall. Bring forth the royal diadem. And crown him. I said, crown him. Crown him, Lord of all. Because I, and the old preacher would say it like this I, I've seen the lightning flash, and I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. Y'all leave me alone. I'm trying to leave it alone. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. And he promised. Never to leave me alone. That's what you do when peace becomes a problem. You got to understand, resources don't matter. Yeah, it, it ain't about what you got personally. Reality doesn't matter. What you see with your eyes, that don't matter. All that matters is reliance on the God of our salvation. And when you rely on him, He's obligated. I, I wish I had some help. Yeah, when you rely on him, he's obligated. For the Bible says that they that delight themselves in him, he shall give them the desires of their heart. But you got to delight in him first. All right, I'm through. Come on, Deeks. Come on. I'm, I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. That's what you do when peace becomes problematic. You got to have the right focus, the right mindset when you're in spiritual warfare. You can try to fight spiritual warfare with carnal weapons all you want. And it ain't going to get you nowhere. That's why I said we use prayer as a steering wheel and not a spare tire here. That's why we change from the prayer call to coming together, touching and agreeing when we pray. Yeah, do, do I have to remind you of, 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 of when we came here Sunday after Sunday and we prayed, we held hands and what did God do? That's what happened when we earnestly prayed together as a body of baptized believers. But is there one? Come on, is there one? The doors of this church are open. You may come as a candidate for baptism. You can come and, and join this body of baptized believers if you show, so choose. Find favor in 
You can come for prayer. We are the people of prayer. Or maybe you just want to come and say, God, you know, I, I haven't done everything I'm supposed to do, but I come to rededicate my life to you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. Come on. Come on, anybody else? Come on. Don't let this moment pass you by. say amen. amen let us all say amen again amen. amen we dare not just casually slide by this portion of service because this is what it's all about and some unsaved man woman boy or girl could run come running asking what must I do to be saved and um we have, we have three so far. You never know what the Holy Spirit is doing in somebody else's life. And we just don't want to slide by it. But we do want to give you an opportunity. Amen. Amen. Just because this portion will be over with, if, if your intentions are you want some prayer or I don't know what's going on, I guess I need to go back up to the pulpit. Um, whatever your, your intentions are, uh, you just let us know and uh, we'll make sure uh, to, to meet your need. Amen. Amen. Val. Read. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. No, hold on. You deserve it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't, don't let this moment pass you by. Told you, you never know what the Holy Spirit is doing in somebody else's life. That's why it behooves you to talk about the Lord every now and then in your conversations. Because it don't matter what the person looked like. We just discussed it. It don't matter about reality. Hello? Amen. Make sure. Ain't nobody looking for a church home. Everybody wants some prayer? Well, we're going to pray for everybody anyhow, so. All right. Amen. Val, you ready? Wait, wait a minute. Anybody else? 
All right. All right. Read, Val. Good morning, Mount Horror. We have uh, today, we have Bernetta for traveling prayer. We also have Shante and LaQuinta for prayer. And we have Zaniah Jahankin for baptism. Oh, no. We can do better than that. Come on, y'all. We got one. Wait. Wait, before you do it, we got to find out one thing. One thing. Come on, stand up, sweetheart. We got to find, give me that name again. Zaniah. Zaniah. <laughs> Zaniah. That's a, that's a beautiful name, baby. That's a beautiful name. All right. In order to be baptized, in order to be baptized, we need to know one thing. Because what baptism is, is an outward show of an uh, outward expression of an inward faith. And so in order to be baptized, you, we got to know, do you, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now we can celebrate because we going in the water. Come on, y'all. Come on. Amen. 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 Zaniah, uh, who? Jonathan? Johanakin? I think she know her last name. He gonna tell me she pronouncing it wrong. Right on, right on, amen. So what is it? We gonna go with her. She said Jonathan. She said Jonathan, so Jonathan is gonna be. Amen. And so, and look, we don't waste time here. Uh, we want to baptize you next week. We want to baptize her next week, next Sunday. Uh, that'll be the first thing that we do in our service. So that means, well, you always here on time. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we're going to baptize her uh, next week. Um, yeah, next week we're going to baptize her. So bring her, uh, bring her back. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. And then we have three who have come for prayer. Uh, We're going we to pray for everybody. Come on down here, Big Mike. Come on. Come on. Stand up with us. Uh, Zaniah. Zaniah. That is a pretty name. Zaniah sounds like an Old Testament name. It sounds like a book of the Bible. Amen. But we thank God for you, Zaniah. And uh, we have three who have come uh, for prayer. And uh, we're going, even though they, they came specifically for prayer, I do realize all of us uh, need prayer. And so I'm going to, uh, Val, where is that microphone? Pass it pass it to Big Mike and uh, we're going to allow Big Mike going to take us to the throne of grace. Shall we pray? For your glory, Lord, I will do anything. Just to see you, Lord, I will do anything. Lord, thank you for calling me friend. I do not take that lightly, Lord, and we should not take that lightly, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the ones who have come for prayer, and we thank you for the ones who are sitting out that need prayer also, God. God, we are in a spiritual warfare. Satan is busy trying to take us out, God, but you said if we just call on the name of Jesus, that we will be all right. Everything will be all right if we just call on that name. God, you've given us a pattern of healing. All we got to do is follow it, Lord. 
you are a doctor in the hospital, you are a mother to the motherless, you are a friend to the friendless, and Lord, you are a healer to the sick. And God, we thank you for that, God. We don't take that lightly. God, whatever the need is, whatever the need is in this circle and in this body of Christ, God, we ask that you breathe your breath on it right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we know that everything is going to be all right. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, we thank you for the ones who made it here today, the ones that had the desire and didn't quite make it, Lord, that they make it from now on. God, we got to learn that no matter what kind of sickness we feel, we got to get in the house. Healing is in the house. Deliverance is in the house, God. And we thank you for that, God. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And I give you all the praise. Lord, because you protected me on Friday night. And I thank you, Lord. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Deep. Go. Go deep. Uh, grab that the uh, the the offering. Offering. Uh, the offering things. We've come to be a blessing to our musicians. Uh, I, we've come to be a blessing to our musicians. Amen. And uh, I'm, I'm going to start the offering off uh, with the $100. And, uh, uh, huh? Uh, yeah, get the other tray. I'm going to start the offering off with $100. Uh, of course, we pay our musicians. It, it ain't what they could get somewhere else. Um, but my goal, my goal is to be able to pay top-notch salaries to all of our salaried employees. I just believe if you're doing something for the Lord, you ought to get paid top notch hello amen In including the pastor <laughs> top notch amen I just believe it I, I believe it that's, that's the journey we're on uh, we're about to celebrate four years y'all amen And so we got a long way to go, uh, but we thank God. Yeah, go ahead and move. Go ahead and move. Um, but we thank God for what he's done already in these three years going on four years. And I just believe as, as much, the more we rely on him, the more that he would be a blessing to us. Amen? It's better to give than to what? The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, I need you to give a good offering because we got to split this five ways. Hello? Amen. Amen. Come on. Anybody else? Did y'all get them people in the kitchen? Yeah. 
Amen. Hallelujah. All right. All right. All right. We're going to pray for this offering. Let us bow. Oh, God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for the givers. Uh, thank you for those who wanted to give but had none to give. We ask and pray that this offering would be a benefit to our musicians, that they may know how much love and appreciate them. May this offering also be used to the glory of your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, take it back. Yeah, take it back there, count it, and we're going to write checks. Yeah. We're going to write checks. Oh, I'm sorry. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right, y'all, uh, continue to pray. Um, once again, I'm going to be uh, traveling to Atlanta, Texas. Amen. Come on, Kate. Come on. Come on up here. Anybody got some change? How old are you? Seven? Six? Ain't nobody got no change. No? Okay. All right. We're right here. Happy birthday, man. Happy birthday, Kate to Kate. Happy birthday. Y'all give him some money. Give him some money. He used, to, he used to say some stuff for us, but he done got too big now. He don't want to say it no more. Come on, Sister McGowan. Give her that mic. Get that microphone. We're also we're celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And and we got, look, Horeb's first couple, married couple, is in the house. Amen. Amen. The Parhams. I got a couple of married couples in here. Y'all know I got a, I, I got a perfect record. And I want to keep it that way. Brother Fuquay, I want to keep it that way. Amen. Come on, come on, uh, uh, Sister McGowan. If I can have all birthday parties and anniversary celebrants come up to the front. Oh. All birthday, April birthdays come to the front and anniversary, wedding anniversary. We might want to check some driver's license, make sure. <laughs> oh, David, it's your birthday this week, this month? Yeah, 27th. 27th, all right. All right, once you get to once you get to stuff, go on back and sit down. <laughs> stick and move, stick and move. Oh, she wants to take a group picture? Oh. Well y'all okay, take it out there. Matter of fact, they're going to be the, the first ones to leave will be the birthdays and the anniversary so they can get a group picture of all of you. Okay? All right. Oh, he's waiting on his. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. 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 
I guess we got some food because they in the kitchen. So we got some food. Get you something to eat. God bless each and every one of you. Um, let us continue to be in prayer. Uh, we thank God. Come on, young lady. Come on. I'm going to give you three minutes. Three minutes. Uh, now, of course, here we don't, I don't, I don't, we don't support or push uh, any candidate uh, that's running for an office. I, I encourage you, as I've done always, to listen to the candidates and make an educated uh, uh, decision as to who you're voting for. Amen. Amen. But as far as trying to push somebody or saying go straight Democratic, no, you, you have the right to your choice. But what I do want, uh, what I do, what we do, what we do do is allow the candidates to come and quickly, eh, quickly give us a little spill. Amen. Give me that mic over there. Give us a little spill just so you can hear, you can hear what they putting down. And uh, I encourage everybody to do your civic duty. Vote. Whenever they have a vote, vote. Amen. Amen. Come on, young lady. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you all for having me here um, and giving all honors to God. Did a wonderful service, and thank you so much, Pastor. Okay. My name is Queenie Nichols, and I am running for school board here in District 2 for Lancaster ISD. And I am running against, um, I have a component that's um, going for re-election. But I want to talk about what my purpose is. Uh, my goal is to work very heavily with the school board that exists, because if we don't work together, we won't be able to accomplish anything. And I would suggest that everyone get out and vote. I have three kids that have graduated from Lancaster ISD and two grandkids that are in the school district now. I have always been heavily involved in the school district because I like to know what's going on and like my voice be heard. So please get out and vote. I do have my wonderful uh, campaign manager over here, my husband. Uh, <laughs> we do things together, right? That's part of marriage counseling, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he's been very supportive. Um, we do run the Lancaster MLK Foundation, which we both are a part of that. And like I said, we've been heavily involved in this city. And I stand for um, supporting the children with education and making sure everyone is held accountable and um, making sure they do what we need them to do for our children, okay? So it's, it's not any titles uh, that direct us. So, But I want to thank you all. The church was lovely. It's always good to be in the Southern Church. Um, <laughs> I go to Oak Cliff uh, Fellowship, but I like to come home and hear that good old songs too. So thank you very much. Appreciate y'all. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you, madam. Uh, she's, she, you're going to hang around for a while, right? So y'all... If you got any questions you want to ask her, feel free uh, to, to ask her. I already asked her. I said, uh, what church you go to? That's <laughs> yeah, my first question. What church you go to? Amen. So see, we've talked. Uh, but if you got any questions and uh, concerns you want to talk with her about, please, at the close of service, uh, do that. Amen. Amen. Am I forgetting anything? No? Saturday, 8 o'clock. Uh, Saturday, 8 o'clock for our giveaway. We need all our volunteers here at 8 o'clock. As well, uh, don't forget about the change bucket back there. If you got some spare change, a couple of dollars. Folk, I looked at it, folk putting 20s and 5s in there. So we're going to be a blessing to somebody. Amen. Young adult outing when? 7 p.m. at Chicken and Pickle. Chicken and Pickle. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Chicken and Pickle. Which one? In, in, in Grand Prairie. Chicken and Pickle. 
chicken and pickle for the young adults. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, Big Mike, and let us out, man. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, most definitely. This week, brothers, if any of y'all are available, I'll be here tomorrow morning early. But if any of y'all can come up here any day of the week, come up here and help me cut some of this grass. I sure would appreciate it because <laughs> Brother Steve, he's out of town, and he and I, we're the only ones available. So I've been headed out since he's been gone. And it's, it's wearing this old 82-year-old guy out. I'm, I'm tired. So if y'all can help me, just come out. If you got any kind of equipment, bring it, and I'll meet you. I'll be here at 730 in the morning. Amen. Uh, matter of fact, I, I don't know what happened to the the yard crew that we had that we hired, uh, but we need to be find we need to be finding another yard crew, uh, cause I'm trying to keep Buddy from trying to do everything. Amen. Did y'all hear him say you 82? Amen. I want Buddy to be around here a little bit, a little while longer. Amen. So y'all help us until we can, uh, till we can secure another yard person, people. Amen. Also, don't forget to holler at Felicia for your T-shirts uh, for worship on the water. And uh, if you have not, look, you need to sign up. Uh, I don't know where we are with the numbers. Worship on the water. 34 spots still left. And so we're going to be inviting folk. And uh, if you would like to go and you're not a member, you're more than welcome to go with us uh, on the worship on the water. Amen. Come on, Big Mike. Let us stand. Let us stand. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you that the word penetrated and someone wants to come running and crying and saying, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we thank you for life, health, and strength. And Lord, we, we thank you for fellowship. And we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise that no one is going to leave here the same way they came. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God and amen.